Hey everyone, my name is Michelle and I'm a volunteer here at the Colorado Wolf and Wildlife Center and this is our weekly wolf vlog. Today I'm hanging out with Raksha, uh, Isa, and Kenai, but uh, it looks like we're mostly hanging out with Raksha. So I just wanted to respond to a few comments that we had on our last wolf vlog because uh, there seems to be a lot of misinformation out there about wolves in Idaho as well as the rest of the United States. So of course uh, a lot of people are very familiar with the reintroduction that took place into uh, Yellowstone National Park and central Idaho back in 1995 and 1996. Uh, it was during that time that wolves captured in British Columbia along with Alberta were uh, reintroduced into Yellowstone. So a lot of people argue that these are giant non-native Canadian timber wolves uh, and they're of course they're out to eat all the elk and the moose that exist here. So uh, unfortunately uh, the <laughs> the native subspecies that used to live in Yellowstone National Park was hunted to extinction. So because of that reason, we had to capture the animals that genetically uh, and physically represented that uh, subspecies in the closest possible manner. And so that would have been uh, Canis lupus occidentalis, uh, which are the wolves that we reintroduced into Yellowstone. So the reason why the Yellowstone reintroduction was so successful is because we had captured wolves that were already living in the wild. Uh, so we see that contrary to the Mexican greys, who were unfortunately extinct completely in the wild and reintroduced from captive populations. That's why the Mexican greys have such a low uh, survival rate once they are released. So, so unfortunately, because of this myth, a lot of people really hate wolves. And of course, uh, they think that they're wiping out all the deer and the elk herds and that wolves are these like, I don't know, super villains that can kill uh, all the elk and all the deer that they want, which is untrue. Um, in fact, the one of the number one reasons why wolves die in the wild is from starvation. Uh, over 85% of the hunts that wolves go on are uh, end in failure. So that means that only 15% of the time do they actually capture any prey. Um, so generally a wolf pack will be successful in taking down a deer or an elk about once a week and that food will sustain them. Now unfortunately sometimes wolves and other predators do kill more than they need at one time. And that only happens when they have the opportunity to do so. Uh, we've had a lot of great scientific conversations with uh, not only biologists, but of course also the people who were on the ground walking the wolves back into Yellowstone National Park. Uh, so one of the biologists that I got a chance to speak to, uh, not only was Doug Smith, um, but also a gentleman from Michigan who uh, told me about why wolves sometimes or how they sometimes uh, engage in surplus killing and essentially what that is <laughs> is when they kill more than they can eat at one time. Uh, but wolves, like I said, they're not very good hunters. And in fact, they're really not built for hunting. Uh, they have, <laughs> they don't have big giant claws. They don't have rotating wrists, so they can't grab onto their prey. Uh, and they don't have uh, these big giant teeth like we see with uh, big cats that can break in all the necks of their prey. So unfortunately, when wolves do <laughs> get involved in surplus killing, uh, that means they had the opportunity to do so. So, so a lot of times we see that in places like feedlots, like the uh, feedlot in Wyoming last year where wolves killed 19 elk. Uh, and then we also see that sometimes when the elk or deer are in deep snow. Uh, so the wolves will take more than they can eat at one time. They eat all the good stuff and they leave the rest for later. Uh, it's kind of the same thing if you go to the grocery store, you're not buying food that you need um, for just that day. You're buying enough food to last you the whole week uh, or even longer. So just think of it the same way. Unfortunately, uh, people will come by, they find the carcasses and they automatically assume that the wolves are just these vicious killers uh, who are killing for fun or for sport, which is untrue. <laughs> what happens is uh, they will continue returning to those carcasses over and over again. There's even some bison carcasses in Yellowstone that have been revisited for more than a year after the wolves took down this bison. Um, so they're not out there just to kill for fun. They're not taking down this uh, huge toll on the population of deer and elk. So the reason why this myth persists that wolves kill more than they need and they're uh, taking down the, all the elk and uh, deer around Yellowstone is largely because of the decline in the elk population in the last 20 years in Yellowstone National Park. So in 1995 and 96, when they reintroduced wolves into the areas, there was about tw uh, two, I'm sorry, there was about 20,000 elk living inside of Yellowstone National Park. Whereas today we're down to about 5,000. So unfortunately, uh, people blame the wolves for that. Now wolves being 
predators. They are part of the reason why there has been a decline. But you have to understand that the decline in the elk population is not solely due to wolves and it's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, we all know that the elk have overbrowsed and overgrazed on uh, the parklands. Uh, and uh, now that we have fewer elk in the area, there is more biodiversity. Uh, there has been a boost in several hundred. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's been a boost in several hundred animal and plant species since the wolves were reintroduced because the elk are now moving around more often and they're in smaller groups. Now, again, let me get back to the population decline. So of course, a lot of people quote this population decline and they blame the wolves for it, but a lot of people don't look at the history of elk in Yellowstone National Park. So if we take the history back all the way back to the 1960s, uh, we would actually discover that in 1960, there was about 3,000 elk living in Yellowstone National Park. That's when humans stopped managing elk in the park. So the population was left completely unchecked and that's when the population exploded to 20,000 elk. So we reintroduced the wolves. They helped trim down the elk population a little bit uh, in Yellowstone National Park. And again, that's not a bad thing. And then unfortunately, a lot of people see it as a bad thing when it's not. It's good for our ecosystems. Uh, maybe not for our, our, our egos, but it's good for our ecosystems. So. <laughs> Come here. So essentially, the elk population in Yellowstone National Park is back down to the historic average. So that's a very good thing, that's positive. Uh, but overall, when we look at the elk populations in the, the states that wolves are found in, like Idaho, uh, Montana, and Wyoming, the elk populations have actually increased as a total over the last 20 years. Montana's elk population alone has increased 66%, 35% uh, in Wyoming and 5% in Idaho. And most of the GMUs, which are the game management units in those states, are at or above the population goals for ungulates. Uh, and ungulates are hoofed animals. So for example, on this map of Montana, the GMUs with too many elk are colored in red. Those in green are ideal and those in yellow are below objective. The area circled is where wolves tend to be concentrated and you can see that most places are still at ideal populations with several that are still too high and very few that are below. According to a 2006 study, wolves tend to target the very young or very old, not animals with the prime breeding age. Hunters, on the other hand, tend to take animals that are between two and nine years old during their prime reproductive years. And because wolves tend to eat younger elk, a study was done in 2011 in the Bitterroot Valley of Montana in order to determine the leading cause of elk calf loss. Of course, everyone thought it would be the wolves, but results were surprising. A total of 286 calves were tagged and 171 of those had their fates documented. The remaining 115 calves had unknown fates due to their ear tag failures. Only 33% of the calves survived their first year, and that means 67% of the calves died. Of those 67%, 5% of the losses were due to wolves, and 36% were due to mountain lions. Other factors such as starvation accounted for the rest. A similar study was done in Yellowstone in 2014, and it yielded nearly the same results, with 30% of the calves surviving their first year, and a total of the 15% of losses were attributed to wolves. The main difference was that 60% of the losses were determined to be due to bears instead of mountain lions. So the wolves are not these big bad animals that they're made out to be, and unfortunately a lot of people still believe those myths, as was very uh, evident on our last wolf blog. Unfortunately, a lot of people still believe the big bad wolf myths, and they're really not. Um, they're not out there, they're not slaughtering all the elk, they're not slaughtering all the deer, and they're definitely not eating all the livestock. In fact, less than one-tenth of one percent of livestock losses are due to wolves. Uh, but unfortunately, it is all these big bad wolf myths that continue to persist. So the wolves are not going to eat all the deer and the elk. Um, they both depend on each other for survival. The elk, hey, come here. Uh, the elk need the wolves to help keep them strong and healthy and keep the herds strong and healthy. And of course the wolves need the elk so that they have something to eat. Uh, it's an evolutionary arms race essentially. But unfortunately people do believe that wolves will kill all the deer and the elk, which is not true. Uh, it hasn't ever happened and if it were to, uh, the wolves, hey, uh, wolves and elk would not have existed by the time Europeans showed up to uh, North America. So. 
I know this was a really long vlog, <laughs> so uh, thank you guys so much for joining us today and we'll see you guys next week uh, to discuss some more topics about wolves. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and we'll be happy to answer them next time we see you. Have a good week.